I'm Emily Levitt, Vice President of Education at Sylvan Learning. As a former English teacher, I love talking about books. So it's my pleasure today to kick off the Battle of the Books. Today we'll be joined by author Molly Brooks, who wrote the graphic novel Sanity and Tallulah, which is a terrific book name. She's gonna be talking to us about what it's like to be an author, how she became an author, and she'll also have some advice for kids who love to write. So without further ado, let's kick off the Battle of the Books. All right, great. Hello everyone, I'm Molly Brooks, and uh, I wrote the graphic novel Sanity in Tallulah. It's a science fiction adventure about two best friends who live on a space station and get into a lot of mad science trouble. In the first book, um, Sanity desperately wants a pet kitten, and she works through that by making a experimental science kitten in the laboratory that has three heads, which is fine until it escapes. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the process of making a graphic novel because it's something that a lot of people are less familiar with than just writing words because you have to write the words but also fit them in with the pictures and it's a little bit of a different process. So this is where uh, the graphic novel was done. Uh, this is my studio in my apartment in Brooklyn, New York. And you can see at the bottom of that picture my assistant, Cardigan, who um, has been very helpful through the whole process. This is my other assistant, Phoebe, also extremely helpful. Helping, helping a lot. Also helping, this is Scully. Um, I mentioned that the first book is all about how Sanity desperately wants a cat. When I wrote the book, I was living in an apartment where I wasn't allowed to have a cat. And I think a lot of the book was about that frustrated desire to like have a fuzzy animal to hang out with. And while she solved her problem with mad science, I solved my problem by moving to a different apartment and getting three cats. <laughs> Not all cat pictures, I promise. Um, but. Uh, Cardigan and Scully are best friends. And the book's about best friends, so it's thematically appropriate to include this adorable picture. So, Sandy Nichalula is the first novel that I both wrote and drew, but uh, before I did that, I actually had my very first graphic novel job illustrating one that someone else wrote. And that was called Science Comics Flying Machines, How the Wright Brothers Soared. It's nonfiction. It's very educational. It's extremely accurate because I went very obsessive in the research and like got all of the details as right as I possibly could. So if you see a wrench in that book, it is the correct wrench. <laughs> if you see a uh, you know, a bicycle in that book, it is the bicycle. But that was a really fun project. It was the longest thing I had ever drawn. So it helped me to learn how to do um, lots and lots of pictures in a short amount of time. I had uh, one year to draw the whole book and there were 120 pages. So that was new. And it was just really fun to see, because the story is all about how the Wright brothers kind of problem solve their way through the idea of how do we get up there? How do we solve the problem of heavier than air flight? So I liked seeing them work through that and using pictures to explain the detailed 
process of working through that. But like I said, I got kind of obsessive about the research and while it was fascinating, it also felt it was like so much work because I was so scared of getting anything wrong. So for my next project, I thought, oh, well, what if I have that fun problem solving part and like the science cool stuff, but it's science fiction so I can just make stuff up instead of having to like look it up. And that sounded way easier. It was not, but it was difficult in a different way. So um, I really wanted to tell a story about best friends figuring out a mystery together. And I've always liked sci-fi, so having them on a space station seemed like a good way to make a fun world for them to run around in and figure out. Before even I did Flying Machines, I published, published, I printed out some pieces of paper and stapled them together and uh, sold them and passed them out to publishers that I wanted to work with because I had these characters that I really liked. So I made little short stories with them and made little pamphlets. And so Sanity and Tallulah's first adventures are actually SOS and Time Loop, a 30 page and a 16 page story. And you can see that it looks different than the final ones because things evolve through the process. So once I knew that I wanted to do a longer story with them, I had to actually think more carefully about what the world that they lived in looked like because I wanted the world that they lived in to be really true and to feel like it was a place with form and function. So I decided that space was basically long haul trucking and that it would feel very much like living in an RV or like on a boat or something that has uh, pieces that adapt to the present need. So there's a lot of cabinets that pull out of the wall and tables that pull out of the floor and uh, control panels on the walls and stuff like that. Because I wanted it to feel very functional, but also lived in. And as though it was ready at any moment to become something else to fit the needs of the people living there. Just lots, again, obsessive about the research. And I also wanted it to feel old, like not old in, like obviously it's science fiction and they're living in space, so it can't be old, old, but I wanted it to feel as though it used to be new and it wasn't anymore. So I was trying to reference uh, technology from like a couple decades ago. So stuff that was top of the line high tech when it came out, but now feels dated to us. So sharp corners, like not quite square angles, uh, lots of screens and buttons and stuff that we don't see on cell phones anymore. I wanted it to feel just a little out of date. So um, I played Tetris on this when I was a kid. <laughs> and so, but you can see uh, in the set design for the book that I kind of used those as a starting point for designing the space station Wilnick that the characters live on and all of the vehicles that they interact with. There's a lot of, um, angles and hexagons and like stripes. Remember that green truck? This is uh, Tallulah's dad's space shuttle that he cruises around in and it's very much designed like a, a houseboat or an RV 
to be very practical, but also for long-term occupancy. So you can see uh, there's a scene where they're pulling the bunks out of the wall and setting them up and stuff while they're having a conversation. So I also, because it was so important to me that it felt like a place that you could walk around in and that people actually lived in, I built 3D models in um, a pr computer program uh, of all of the major sets, including these are all Tallulah's family's apartment, so that I could zoom in and like move around the space and make sure that it felt real. That guy isn't in the book. He's part of the computer program. He's just like, so you can see how big stuff is. But that's their living room. And uh, I wanted it to be a place that people actually like moved around and things felt consistent and real. Sanity's dad is the head of the space station and this is his office. All those men are just little mannequin people. Again, angles, etc. So once I had the world kind of figured out, I had to design characters that would populate it because I had Sanity and Tallulah, but no one else really. Like they're the only characters that appear in the short stories. So I tried to think about who would live on this space station. And again, I went back to like adaptability and practicality and lived in coziness. So all of the costumes are, there's a lot of like work overalls that are tied at the waist so that like they could go on at a moment's notice but it's more comfortable not to have them on right now if you don't need it um a lot of knitwear because it felt like in space things are very far apart and there's a lot of downtime and it's cold so probably a lot of people knit so everyone has sweaters and leg warmers and arm warmers and mittens and hats. And it's also one of my favorite things to draw. So <laughs> that's really why it's there. My favorite character is Tallulah's mom, Dr. Vega, because she's very practical and very kind and um, I like the way she deals with problems, her daughter included. This is uh, Sanity's dad. He is, he spends most of the book just very stressed out and annoyed because he has a lot of responsibility and his daughter is not helping by creating a three-headed kitten which now appears to be destroying the space station that they're living on. So he's got some things to work through. And these are just more outfits. So all of that stuff happens before I actually start writing the book itself. Because I want to like have a good idea of how the world works and who the people in it are. And after that, I do an outline, um, which is just a very detailed plan for what happens in the plot. And then because I start, the thing that makes um, doing and planning a graphic novel different from a regular novel is that the pictures take up space. So you have to plan differently because if you have lots of words, those words are going to be on the page and there's less room for pictures. And if you want something to be really noticed, it has to be big enough that like you don't just glance over it. And I knew how many pages I was allowed to have, 240. So I 
drew out 240 little pages and then I took all of the plot points from my outline and made a big map for myself of how much space I had for every bit of plot. Um, because if I, do, if I don't plan correctly, then I have to scrap whole sections of the book and like reorganize it. So it's better to like do a lot of planning ahead of time to make sure that I know where I want to put everything. So once I've kind of figured out where everything approximately should go, I started doing thumbnails. And thumbnails are just like little, very rough, rough drawings. These, like no one sees these except me. And I'm really the only person that can tell what's supposed to be happening in them. But their purpose isn't to be shown or to uh, like figure out what things are going to look like. It's to figure out what actions happen. So if the, in the outline I have a conversation happening, then in the thumbnails is when I figure out, oh, I need a moment of like Tallulah looking at Sanity. And then I need a moment of Sanity looking at Tallulah and stuff like that. So that I make sure that there's nothing that isn't being shown visually in the story. And once I have all those moments, then I can start figuring out how to organize them on the page. And then I start actually drawing and figuring out how big I can put characters for the text that I have and how to get everything to work together nicely. And all of the things that I've talked about so far, my editor sees none of them. My editor sees the script and the script is me taking all the stuff that I've done and trying to um, organize it into a clear script um, so that she can read through it and understand what I'm trying to make happen. So she goes through that. She tells me what's not working, like what I have left off the page. And um, eventually, after a couple rounds of revisions, uh, it gives me approval. Um, and then I move on to pencils. And pencils is actually drawing the book. So because of all my pre-planning, my obsessive pre-planning, I know where all the boxes on the page go. So I start there because that's a good skeleton to work with. And then after that, I put the text in because because of my script, I know where each box's text goes. And then once I have the text in there, I can see how much room is left over to actually draw. And this is um, my work set up drawing hand lettered text. And then I draw the pencil sketches uh, with the text kind of grayed out so that I can see about how much space it's taking up. And then I send that to my editor. After like doing all of the things that I've described so far, I very much staring at the world that I'm creating from close up. And it's hard to look at things objectively when you're that close to it. So the editor's main job is to read it as someone who did not make it and to point out the things that don't make sense or could be better. So um, on the top row of this slide is the first sketch draft that I sent in, and the bottom row is the um, revisions that my editor suggested. So it's stuff like the big 
reveal of the dark, scary room. It should take up the whole page because it's a big reveal. It shouldn't have like a border around it because that takes away some of the drama. Another thing that takes away the drama is if you think about the physical structure of a book, if you have the pages open and the big reveal is on the right-hand page, then when you're reading the left-hand page that comes before it, you've already seen it out of the corner of your eye, so it's not a dramatic surprise. So reorganizing the book so that they're walking and they're talking and they're walking and they're talking and then they're entering a room and you turn the page and then you see the big scary room makes it bigger and scarier and more impactful. So stuff like that is what really happens in the revisions and that's my favorite part. It's really fun to make something better. It can be very intimidating knowing that I have to make uh, 250 pages of something, but once I've done a rough version of that and I can like react to it, then the rest of it is fun and problem solving. Oh, and then the page after that, it's just, if there are fewer panels, then each panel could have more room and it felt less cramped and it could be more like walking through a big room. Little things like that. Um, oh, there's a part where they find a super gross slime thing. And I like understood because I'd invented it that it was a super gross slime thing. So it felt like enough to just kind of have it in the corner of the page. But my editor, Rotem, was like, uh, the reader doesn't know that it's a big, gross slime thing. You need to show them a big, gross slime thing. It needs to be big. It needs to be gross. Like, it needs room. So it got a whole page to itself in the final version of the book. These are um, all the pages of the book spread out and color-coded by how much I need to change about them and what uh, round of revision. And then after that, I do the final art. <laughs> and that's kind of the most boring part for me because I've already solved all of the problems and it's just kind of cranking it out. So I listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts and just kind of crank out the final art. The Sanity and Tallulah schedule is basically a book a year. So um, I had kind of some leeway with the first book because I wrote the script as the pitch. So I already had the script written when I started out and that caused a problem with the second book because I forgot that that was like a part of the process that I needed to apply time to. <laughs> The drawing part takes uh, six months, so it's kind of evenly split. I'm actually working on the third book right now. That will probably come out next year. Oh, and then here's the cover. And that kind of goes through the same process as the rest of the book, the sketch. And then minor tweaks. And then final art. And then eventually it becomes a real life book. And book two. These are characters from book two. And some spreads from book two. Field trip is about them going on a school trip. The problem is that their school trip is to a real life planet, which no one in their class has ever been to before. 
So it's uh, kind of a learning curve and it goes very, very awry.